Um, so, hi, I'm Christian Molikov, and I'm going to talk to you about Cube. Um, I, for those who don't know me, I um, started contributing to KDE about nine years ago, and for the last four years I've been responsible for the desktop client for Colab Systems, um, who develops the, the Colab Grouper server. So, what is Cube. Cube is um, a modern communication and collaboration client. It's um, email, it's calendaring, it's task managing, management, but it's also instant messaging, um, note taking. Um, it's no, that doesn't mean that we do all that right now already, but that's sort of the, the scope that we want to work within. Um, so it's it's built using Qt Quick on top of a high performance core called Sync. And um, yeah, it's developed within the KD community. Um, we have other members of the, the KD community that are part of the development team, especially the, the visual design group, the KD VDG, that helps with a lot of the usability issues. Um, so for some of its goals, um, we aim to be pretty and useful. So we don't want to make a toy that just looks pretty, but we also believe that in order for people to like to use the application, um, having a clean user interface helps a lot. Um, we want to have a maintainable code base. Um, so that means we, we, we have a focus on, on testing it well and having it automatically tested so we can move fast without breaking stuff. Um, we also have a focus on deployability. What I mean by that is not only um, portability, so we want to target um, Mac OS X, we want to target um, Windows, but we also want to go on mobile platforms eventually. So we try to keep our dependency chain in control and only depend on things that we really require. Um, but by deployable, we also mean that we want to support automated setup. So if you have um, large deployments, uh, which we, for instance, do with um, Colab Systems, then you want to be able to script most of the setup process and have the necessary tools for that as well. Um, Cube should be a, a high performance tool when you require it, so it gets the job done quickly. We think that is important, um, that you don't have to wait for the tool, uh, but it also shouldn't get in your way if you're not actively using it. So if you, if you don't use it, it should get out, get out of your way, and if you're using it, it should be there. Um, another a target that we have is um, to make secure communication easier and more effortless. More about that later. Um, so, but where are we right now? Cube is in a fairly early state of development. We've worked on it for the last year, but it's, uh, it was a lot of framework building, figuring out the architecture, um, preparing um, so that we can scale up the development as well. So initially we're focusing on email, only, so we're building a, a simple email client as um, our MVP of sorts because that's just the hardest um, use case um, data-wise. So if we can deal with a million emails or say folders that ha contain like 60,000 mails or so, um, a to-do list is not going to be a problem. That's why we're focusing on email first. So that's pretty much the current state of Q. It, it's very fairly basic so far. We can get to the mail, we can show the mail, we can render um, plain text mail, we can render HTML mail, um, we have the encryption or the, the whole GPG stack um, already included thanks to, to code that we um, share with, KD, with the rest of KDPIM, so with contact. Um, we have support for multiple accounts. Um, but that's pretty pretty much where it is right now. So it's still quite 
a bit away from, from <coughs> being useful for end users. Um, if we have time, I'm also going to do a, a quick live demo at the end, but we'll see. Um, so in order for you to, to understand whether this application could also be useful to you or whether you would be interested in something like that, and ideally, of course, whether you, you'd be interested in, in actively working on it, I'm going to um, highlight some of the, the, uh, the focus areas that we have to hopefully show, show you like where, we're, where we eventually want to go. Um, for users, I think one important aspect is that we want to focus more on workflows. So traditionally, we have like email application, we have a calendar application, we have a note-taking application, um, but they're all sort of separate. They, they perhaps integrate a little bit, but not a lot. Um, however, the, the, task, the tasks that users actually have to do often involve a variety of, of these different applications. So if you think of a, a workflow like organizing a meeting, you have some, some communication initially perhaps, then you have some scheduling, which could be done over the calendar. Um, then at some point you, you have the meeting, for, for the meeting you probably have an agenda, which is sort of a task list that you maybe want to run through. Um, during the meeting you're taking notes, um, so out of that come meeting minutes that you perhaps have to approve again, depending on the nature of the meeting. So there is, is quite a variety of different tasks in there where we think we, we can support the user better if we, if we modeled that and not just gave him like an, app, an email application and a calendar application and then leave him up to figuring it out himself. Um, Another focus is certainly um, usability. We, we work closely together with um, usability experts and designers from the ground up. We try to build that into the development process that we do that regularly and not as an afterthought. Um, we, we don't want to um, solve all possible use cases with Cube. Um, we believe that for, for a good user experience, we have to figure out which problems we have to solve and then focus on them and try to solve them cleanly and thus do what we do right instead of just adding, adding features because we could. Um, and another um, focus point in, in regards to usability is certain um, the, the whole security aspect because currently this is just fairly complex leading to users not using encryption, for instance, because you have to set it all up yourself. And we believe there are a lot of opportunities to improve upon that by integrating, for instance, the key management into the address book, by um, using things like trust and first use, um, by having a simple vis vi visualization integrated um, with like a, a color scheme, um, green, yellow, red. So you, you recognize immediately whether a communication channel is secure or you don't know or um, actually insecure because the key was revoked, for instance. Um, Cube is first and foremost a networked application because if we're building a communication and collaboration so solution, we're, you're going to want to communicate with someone. And um, we, what that means is we, we focus only on content that you have typically stored on a remote server. We don't want to rely too much on local data because if we do that, then we, for instance, break the, the multi-device use case. So if you have a web interface, you have a laptop, you have perhaps a mobile device, if you rely on your local data of one of these um, devices, then you're not going to have that same data available on, on another device. So therefore, we believe we should take this as a, as a focus point and say, OK, that if the data is not available on the server, then we're not going to use it. Um, that doesn't mean you can't use it with local data like a mail deer. 
Um, we, for instance, have right now a mail dear backend for Cube, which then just treats the mail dear as the remote content, but that's just not really the focus point. Um, of course, we are doing all the network access over open protocols as, as far as possible. That's currently um, just IMAP for, for accessing the email and the DAF protocols for address book and calendaring. Um, from the development perspective, I think one of the um, most important um, aspects is that we are trying to build um, reusable components. So that's sort of in, in preparation for what I was talking about earlier, that we want to start mixing up different application types, if you will. So for instance, if you have um, an address book, you, you render the contact in some way. So that could be a component that is then can then be reused, for instance, it, in the email view if you click on, on the sender or, or some other sort of contact. Um, so that way we um, enable consistency, but we also enable use cases um, by allowing to, for those components to be used outside of Cube. So these components can be installed as um, K packages, which is just a, a folder structure essentially bundling a QML file with the, the plugins necessary to access the data. So the component itself knows how to get to the data. So if you have a calendar component, you could, for instance, show that in your desktop clock um, applet, and then you get the full power of your regular um, calendar that you're used to inside um, that clock applet. Um, one of the major um, problems that I want to address with Cube and that I think uh, quickly becomes a problem in a project of, of that size because if, if, if we're going to work on that for a couple of years it's going to be a, a fairly large project. Um, the problem there is complexity. Complexity can very quickly um, become so big that you can't really move anymore and that it feels a bit um, like a Ruben Goldberg machine where you touch one part and then something else moves and that triggers another process and that just becomes very difficult to reason about after some time. So in the, the cube architecture on a, on a very high level it, it looks like this. So you have, these are processes, um, you have the cube process and you have here um, two backends that are called resources. So that could be, for instance, an IMAP backend, and that could be a call dev backend, or it could be two different IMAP servers. And then you have a, a library, so that would be the, the API that Cube is built against, and that provides um, a unified access layer. So from the application um, perspective, it just queries, for instance, for emails, or it queries for calendars, or it queries for events. It doesn't r really know that there are multiple resources. Respectively, it doesn't really care. Um, if we zoom in on that, then the, the green box is the resource. Um, you have the client generating commands. So if you modify an email, or mark it as read, or delete it, it, it sends the commands to the resource, the resource stores it in a queue, and then all the resource does is essentially processing that queue. It just processes one modification after the other. And all these modifications go through a pipeline. The pipeline um, contains uh, different steps. That's an extension point for us to <coughs> process uh, modifications before they hit the store. Um, so in there we could, for instance, do things like filtering or so to folders. So, um, and once that pipeline is processed, we hit the store. 
a notification is emitted that the revision of the store has changed. That's just never increasing revision. And then clients will just update once they get it. So they just replay the changes. Um, on the other side, we have the source, which would for a, an IMAP um, resource, that would be the, the IMAP server. So we have a process, synchronizer process here. So not, not a, a system level process, but just something that figures out what's the difference between the server and what I have locally, generates a bunch of changes, throws them in the queue. The resource processes it exactly the same way. Um, if the change didn't come already from the source, then the, re, uh, the write back will just, it also listens to the revision and will just replay any changes um, that didn't come from here to the source again, thus synchronizing the state. Um, so what we get are these um, nice reactive loops. So the client, all it does is listen for changes and it has a bunch of mo uh, models that are essentially self-updating and that just replay those changes. And on the other side, you just fire commands at the resource and then you're, you're done. So that becomes... Um, it becomes much easier to um, reason about the system and it allows us to mostly contain the, the state uh, to the database. So we, we don't have different parts of the system that maintain their own state. And that I believe helps a lot with um, keeping the complexity at bay. Um, another, dip, um, another important aspect is certainly performance. Um, our approach to performance is not necessarily to try to optimize um, things as, as far as possible because that is always costly and might introduce more complexity. So what we try to do is to not do unnecessary work. And do the work only once that we have to do. What that means first and foremost is queryable data. So we have to be able to query for exactly the data that we actually need for the task at hand. So for instance, if we have a large email folder, say 60,000 messages or so, if we can't query for the data, we're going to have to load all those messages, sort them, for instance, in memory, and then throw 90% of them away again, or 99%, because you actually only have space for like 15 or so. Um, what we're doing instead is we're building the necessary indexes to be able to query for exactly that data. So we can query, for instance, for the first 100 emails in a folder sorted by date, and then we load exactly that, and as you scroll down in the view, we just fetch more. Um, by not o only doing it once, I mean we don't do, we try to not do the work w when we read. So if you click on the folder and it loads the data, we don't want to resort your whole list every time. We build the index when you store the email. We've done it once and then we, we cache the result. Um, cube or sync is, is built on top of a high-performance key-value store. Um, it's called LMDB. I don't know whether you've heard of it. It's a, a key-value store that supports uh, single writer, multi-reader semantics. So we have the resource process as the single writer in the system and all clients as the readers. So one client is certainly Cube. Another could be a, an applet that listens for new mails or something. Um, but what that gives us is um, in-process access to the data. So if you start Cube, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to start any, any other processes. The resource processes are not necessary for read-only access. You only need those processes if you actually want to get updates from your server. <coughs> so if you start Cube, it just, um, LMDB is just a, a memory mapped file essentially, or the database is just a memory mapped file. 
So if you start cube, it will just memory map the database into the process, and then you can get to the data directly in process, which um, makes it very fast and also allows you to do things like recursive queries um, without <coughs> the real penalty because you have the, the data directly available in process and um, it leaves, it, it delegates the, the complexity of, for instance, loading more data and making sure that that is fast to the file system. Um, yeah, so that helps us also to, to write more straightforward code. Um, last but not least is um, deployment and maintenance. Um, if we want to do um, large, large deployments of Cube, we have to have proper support for it um, to make it as easy as possible to, to do these kinds of setups. Um, one example for, for this focus is um, Sync Shell, which is a little command line utility that allows you to do things like setting up accounts for a user, and modifying them, removing them, but also synchronizing them. Um, for instance, synchronizing a certain set of folders, and the, the command line utility will block until the synchronization is complete, so you can put it into a script and run it through for, for multiple users if you want. Um, but it also allows you to do things like querying the local store and um, even modifying um, basically all objects so you can access the, the full API that the application also has available. Um, it even allows you to run it as a script interpreter and then it's, you can write sync shell scripts and it has a little REPL as addition, but that's nice to have. Um, the other important point is definitely a clean separation between configuration and data. Um, what that means that the configuration contains, for instance, your accounts um, that you have set up, but everything you download from your from the groupware server that is data. So you should be at should be able at any point in time essentially to delete the data and the only thing that happens is that you have to pull the data again down from the server. Um, but that, that makes sure, for instance, if you have profile synchronization in a, in a corporate setup that you can have the, the configuration files under the profile synchronization and you can keep the data on the local machine and if you switch to another machine you may have to download some data again from the server but that's about it. Um, last but not least, we have a configurable logging that you can tune the log levels with sync shell um, because we don't want to go the approach that, you, that people compile out the logging output and then we have to provide custom binaries if there is a problem. Um, so we'd rather have proper logging support um, that we then can also integrate with, for instance, journal D or whatever the, the, the system supports. Um, yeah, I think now is a, a <coughs> very good time to, to join this project. Um, over the last year, we've, we've pretty much figured out the architecture and are, are quite happy where it's going. So we can now start to, to scale this up a bit more. Um, Sync is a very interesting modern C++ um, code base. Um, so if you're interested in, in algorithms and performance work and that kind of stuff, then Sync is very interesting, but it's probably a, a more advanced code base. Um, on the Cube side, it's, it's a lot easier. All, the whole UI is written in QML, so there's a lot of that. There's a lot of design work. Um, and uh, then there are some models and controllers that are written in C++, but that's fairly straightforward. Um, but we also need help with things like uh, cross-platform builds. So we unfortunately didn't get to do builds on Mac and Windows and Android. So that's all stuff that we should get going, <coughs> but lack the manpower right now. Um, we do have weekly online meetings that are open to anyone that would like to join. Just write me an email, write uh, an email to the mailing list. 
Um, and otherwise, you can find more information on cube.kd.org. Um, I've just packaged an early tech preview uh, for Fedora 25. It, it's mostly, right now, it's mostly for me to make sure that we actually can package everything and that it works as it should. Um, it's not meant at all for end users to do anything useful, but you're welcome to try it and see what's what and follow it along. Um, that information is also on, on, the, on the homepage, of course, and we'll update this uh, with more up-to-date information as we go along. Um, we plan to release a or tag a, a tech preview within the next couple of weeks, but that will still be for, for development. So for, for end users, it's going to be more towards end of the year for something actually um, end user ready. Um, we also built a flat pack already together with Alesh. If you've seen his talk, it's in the same uh, repository as all other KD applications. Um, it's not automatically updated yet, but eventually we'll get like nightly builds for that. And you can, of course, build it from source yourself if you feel like it. Um, yeah, with that we can, do we still have time? Then we can do a short demo. Oh no. So yeah. <laughs> Looks a bit interesting on a small screen like that. But yeah, on, on the right we have um, like a conversation view. For emails we can uh, That's, for instance, an encrypted message. Um, we can render some HTML spam. Um, we can switch accounts, like this right now. And yeah, there's a composer that you can send an email from. <coughs> And you can move some mails and you can mark as read, but it's not ready for, for consumption, really. Um, but yeah, if I click here on a folder, um, we always issue a query directly to storage. We, we don't cache anything or so, which, again, helps a lot with the complexity that we don't have to do that. Um, yeah, with that, we come to the questions. Seems like um, the, a, 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 bit, a, a possible successor of contact. Is there uh, some intention on that, or um, we're we're not seeking to re the question. Oh, sorry. Um, the question was whether the intention is to replace contact. Um, we do not intend to replace contact. There are many happy users of contact. There's a team supporting, continuing to support contact. Um, for Collab Systems, this will be the successor for our use of Contact. So Contact is our current desktop client. Q will be the successor for it. Um, we, leave, we believe it's more, more suitable for, for our use case. But I think it's, it's really a different target audience. Um, Contact has an incredible amount of, of great features that, that work for uh, a lot of people. And we believe we want to uh, build a simpler product that has a bit more, more focus, I'd say. Um, essentially, the same system, but uh, about backend. It looks uh, quite similar to Akamadi. Uh, <laughs> so why did you write a different backend? How is, is it different from uh, Akamadi? And uh, are you going to replace Akamadi eventually? Um, I. Well, so the question, <laughs> the question was whether, um, well, the same question for Akonadi, whether I'm seeking to replace Akonadi. The answer is pretty 
much the same. I um, have, or I'm maintaining <coughs> contact um, professionally for Collab Systems, so I, I'm quite familiar with the whole system, and I w was obviously heavily inspired by by Akonadi and and Contact as well. But um, I I believe that Akonadi as as it is um, is is too complex, and I believe this system improves upon a some some pain points, if you will. Um, that that I've seen with Akonadi, so that's that's my my try for an improvement upon that. So uh, so why uh, not improve Akonadi? Why uh, writing from scratch? Um, essentially, because it's easier. Okay. So I, I have a question: What about exchange support? <laughs> So the question was whether we would have exchange support. Um, the answer is I don't know. Um, it, it's certainly not an initial focus. Um, we're perfectly open to any contributions, really. Um, yeah, but I mean, the, there's there's nothing <coughs> in principle from keeping us w from having uh, exchange support. Isn't it so that, that the well, sort of only viable way is using the active SIM protocol, and that for that you need a license from Microsoft? Or the client implementation? <coughs> Um, so the question was whether the only viable way is to use active sync and that you would need a license for that, and I don't know. I think that's the <coughs> There's the, the EWS protocol now. I think there's also an Akronadi EWS plugin being developed. Okay. This is more or less the same, um, as some kind of web front end for exchange. Um, so the answer would be EWS, apparently. <laughs> this morning I was going to talk about the connected, <coughs> but that was mostly about the calendar function. Yeah, have the time. Thank you. Thank you. So, people, uh, please stay in your room and uh, please. Uh